Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real-world self-publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. Now let's get on with today's show. Quite some time back, I published a post about Amazon Marketing Services, or AMS, for advertising Kindle eBooks on Amazon. In that post, I talked about my on the cheap advertising strategy of bidding on ads as low as a couple cents, two, three cents per click. It's a slow go advertising strategy for sure. Over time, the return on that ad investment has been pretty good, uh, but it's getting more challenging over time. I got a reader question from the post expressing frustration with not winning bids and having to bid higher amounts, even as high as 47 cents a click, to quote unquote, get anything. I feel that author's pain. It can be very frustrating indeed when higher bids seem to be winning the ad placement game and possibly sales. Seem is the operative word here, as will be obvious in a bit. But is it really necessary to win bids to make sales? Should you aim to win the ad bidding wars on Amazon or even other advertising platforms? And how do you know if you're actually winning at the Amazon ad game? Let's talk about all of that. What's interesting is that authors have no way of knowing what their competitors are actually bidding for Amazon ads. Would Amazon or any other internet advertising platform tell their individual advertisers, hey, you know, so-and-so just spent X number of dollars on their ad? Of course not. These authors are just assuming that their competitors are making bids that are higher than theirs and also making sales. Likewise, Amazon is not going to share with you how many impressions competing ads might be getting. For all you know, you may be getting more impressions overall than your competitors. What can trigger this frustration with Amazon ads is when authors try to test to see if their ads are actually showing up and then they don't see them. What I mean by test is that they enter their chosen keywords, categories, etc., on Amazon in search and hope to see their ads pop up somewhere on the screen. Then all they see are competitors' ads. But this is an inaccurate way to assess if they are actually winning the ad game. Remember that Amazon is showing ads to site visitors based on the visitor's buying and search behaviors coupled with super complex algorithms to which we are not privy. And we don't even have a prayer of understanding it either. When you visit Amazon, Amazon shows you what they think you, as the visitor, want to see, not necessarily what your buyers will see. Since this is something you can't control, you can't assume that what you see on your screen is what your potential book readers will see. Winning ad bids merely means that your ads will appear more frequently. It does not mean that you will automatically win sales. Whether someone buys anything as a result of seeing an ad is a very complex process, and it always has been. Your buyers have to be ready, willing, and able when they see an ad. Because self-published authors may not be business people, their advertising and marketing expectations may be out of whack with reality. They may be expecting thousands in revenues and the number of books sold, especially right after a book launch. That's really rare. And their expectations for what they can achieve with uh, programs such as Amazon ads may be similarly skewed. 
since every book is different, doing an Amazon ad campaign on a small scale can help authors get an idea of the marketing potential for their books since it will afford them some hard data on their book's performance in the real world Amazon marketplace. As with all advertising, online or offline, patience, experimentation, and a bit of investment are required to see what works and doesn't before you make some knee-jerk changes to your campaigns. At least several months to a year of running ads and tracking results is the recommended minimum. So being conservative and closely monitoring your ad spending and results, then making informed adjustments is critical. Sales conversions can be just a small percentage of the clicks your ads receive on Amazon or anywhere else on the internet. Conversion rates, meaning sales made as a percentage of clicks of one to 5% or even much less, are not uncommon in the pay-per-click advertising world. And when you look at the percentage of sales to impressions, which is the number of times that your ad is actually shown, it's even more disheartening, often as little as a minuscule fraction of just 1%. These low returns are not uncommon in marketing and advertising. Even many years ago, when direct mail, you know, the physical snail mail that comes into your mailbox at home, was king of the marketing world. Achieving response rates of 2% from all pieces mailed was considered a great result. So the frustration of many authors who are thrust into being marketers can be caused by their naivete of marketing reality. So how should you figure out what you should bid for your ads on Amazon? Your maximum Amazon ad bid per click should never even come close to the amount of royalty you'll earn per sale. To calculate your maximum ad bid on Amazon's AMS advertising program, when you self-publish on Kindle Direct Publishing, you need these numbers, royalty earned per book, overhead, and net profit target. Let's talk about royalties first. KDP's book upload interface now shows you the net royalty you'll earn per book. So you no longer have to calculate that by hand or guess. And this is such a big change. You'll find the net royalty after any print on demand printing costs or ebook delivery costs are deducted on your book's pricing page on KDP. Even if your Kindle ebook is eligible to make 70% royalty, or if your higher dollar value print book earns a higher royalty, I'd suggest basing your maximum ad bid on the lowest possible ebook royalty rate of 35%. Sales to some global territories and markets may still have a maximum royalty of 35%, though it appears that the major Kindle markets are now at 70% for eligible books. Plus, there's the issue of currency exchange rates, which might slightly alter the exact royalty you'll get in your home country's currency. Sometimes I've been kind of surprised at what I get for an ebook royalty from a foreign market, and it doesn't seem to match anything that I'm used to on Amazon for the US. So. I just think it's safer that way. Also, you have to consider that if you have your Kindle eBooks enrolled in KDP Select, which requires that your eBook be exclusive to Amazon, your ads may generate some Kindle Unlimited subscription reads, and you'll likely only make pennies on those sales. So it's better to be conservative in your royalty projections. 
let's talk about overhead. Overhead is all the expenses you incur to run your author business. Don't say you don't have any, you do. These are things such as internet service, phone service, software, office supplies, commercial insurance, marketing, cost, postage. The list is almost endless. And here's an important overhead issue for authors. All your editing, proofreading, formatting, book cover design, and all the other book development costs that you have, they are expensed as overhead in the year they are purchased, even though it may result in sales or returns in a future year. So your overhead percentage could vary widely from year to year. Over time, you'll be able to determine an average for your business. You might need the help of a CPA to figure this out but just be aware that all of these book development costs are considered overhead. Overhead is usually expressed as a percentage of revenue. Simple example, if your revenue is $100 and your overhead costs are $25, your overhead percentage is 25%. Overhead costs can be all over the map, depending on your business. Overhead percentages of up to 35% of revenues are common, but in very small businesses can be as high as 70 to 100% or more of revenue. Yes, it can be higher than 100%, meaning that the business is losing money even if it makes sales. Your net profit target is the money as a percentage that you want to make after your overhead costs are deducted from your total royalty revenue. Also remember that your net profit will ultimately be subject to income taxes. So here's the formula for your maximum ad bid. It's your royalty minus your royalty times your overhead percentage minus your royalty times your net profit target equals your maximum ad bid. So for example, your minimum Kindle ebook royalty at 35% on Amazon US is $1.05. I checked on one of my books and that's what it was, so I'm using that as an example. Your overhead percentage for the example is 35% and your net profit target is 15% of revenue. So that ends up projecting a maximum ad bid of 52 cents per click. If you want to make more net profit per sale, then you could increase your desired net profit target to determine a maximum ad bid. So for example, say that you wish to make 50% net profit on each Kindle ebook sale. Plugging that into the above formula would come up with a maximum ad bid of 15 cents per click. Each Amazon ad you set up is for a specific format of your book title. But what happens if the buyer clicks on your ad for your more expensive print book, then decides to buy the less expensive Kindle ebook, or even decide to read it with their Kindle Unlimited subscription? If a buyer chooses to buy the Kindle ebook instead of the print book you advertised, the sale will be for a much lower amount than the print book price. According to current KDP pricing requirements, the list price for a Kindle ebook must be at least 20% below the list price for the physical book sold on Amazon. What is unclear to me is if a Kindle ebook sale is generated from your print book ad, would it even show as a sale from the ad? If it isn't, you'll be paying for clicks that won't show as a sales result from that ad, though it will still show as a sale on your KDP reports. If it is shown as a sale resulting from the ad, it will be a lower dollar value sale because it's an ebook and your cost of that sale increases. Amazon tracks Kindle Unlimited reads generated by your ads, whether for print or Kindle ebooks, and they are reported in your AMS advertising dashboard. What I have experienced is that if an ad results in Kindle Unlimited page reads, I make only pennies in royalties, sometimes less than my cost per click. This is why I keep my maximum ad bids for both print and Kindle ebook editions as low as possible. I had multiple authors question whether it would make sense to dramatically boost their ad spend 
to sell more books. I can understand why they ask. A common advertising strategy when introducing a new product or when trying to boost sales of an older product is to increase your ad spend to reach more people or increase ad frequency. In theory and in the past, that made sense. But in today's Amazon marketing reality, it's not so much. On Amazon, you have no control over who will see your ad and when they will see it. Amazon's complex algorithms show ads based on such factors like buyers' current and past buying behavior, the actual items they buy, when they buy, and other data points we just don't know. Authors who advertise may be tempted by Amazon's emails encouraging them to up their ad bids to get more visibility. I equate this to gambling in Las Vegas, but much less fun. Remember, in gambling, the house, which in this case is Amazon, always wins. Instead, I choose to keep my Amazon ad campaigns running continuously at my maximum ad bid level or lower. So how can you measure how your Amazon ads are doing? On your AMS advertising dashboard, you'll see a column for ACOS, A-C-O-S, or Average Cost of Sale. This is calculated by dividing your ad spend by your sales. It is a measure of how effective your ads are. This metric should never go above 100%, meaning that your ad generated sales equal your ad spend. You want your ACOS number to be as low as possible, well under 100% and even as close to 1% as possible. The lower your A cost, the higher your return. You have to remember that this is just a measure of your ad's effectiveness. I'm going to take a quick look at my AMS dashboard for what my current A cost numbers are. I'm looking at my lifetime stats. Now, I've been advertising on Amazon through AMS since about 2016, so um, about five years. And so in the early days, I was getting massive returns because it wasn't as mature an advertising platform as it is today. It was also less competitive, so I was doing really good. But still, even after all of this time, I'm getting an ACOS of 70%, 70.05% currently. It's actually, that's kind of a high ACOS compared to some of my individual campaigns. Your AMS dashboard will also show what each individual campaign is doing. So you can look at the overall investment and you can look at each of these campaigns. And I make decisions based on the ACOS of each individual campaign. So there's been some that have been super good. Uh, my Swag Auto Target campaign, which has been going since 2017, <laughs> is at 1.48%. Yeah, that campaign is doing really well. <laughs> I have another one on a QR code book that I wrote, and that's 2.4%. I have one on blogging, that's at 4.45%. So those are doing really well. And the other ones are in the middling. I have some that are at 10, 12%, and maybe as high as 38%. Now they're is one campaign which completely threw out all of my stats for a lifetime and for a year. It was when I was experimenting with Amazon's lock screen ads, which are ads that show up on people's Kindles as they uh, log into their Kindle. That one had an ACOS of 1900%. Talk about a loss. That was insane. Luckily, because I am watching this AMS dashboard at least once a week, I was able to catch it before it got much worse. One other thing you want to look for is you need to look at your ad spend column on AMS and compare that to the sales column. If after you've given your ad campaign a fair trial period, and you find that your ad spend is not generating any sales, it's time to consider dropping that ad campaign. That can happen for a variety of reasons, which we'll discuss in a bit. But when I looked at my dashboard, 
there were some campaigns that I got rid of right away, and it was for their sponsored brand ads. These are ads that appear at the top of a product page, and it's multiple books, at least in my case, and they literally did nothing. They ran up the ad cost really fast and did absolutely nothing zero sales. So when I take out those stupid campaigns that didn't work, <laughs> my lifetime ACOS is somewhere in the 30-40% range, which isn't bad because that's like a maybe between two, three or more X return on investment. Uh, but, you know, you have to understand that you're going to have some of these campaigns that just don't work. Monitoring is critical and do it at least once a week. Now here's some reasons why your AMS ads may not be working and it has to do with targeting. This has nothing to do with the ad bids in terms of the actual amount. For the manually targeted ads, which means you are selecting the keywords, you may be selecting irrelevant keywords, you're not including competing authors or competing titles as keywords, or the keywords are too broad or too narrow. Now, if you do auto campaigns, auto targeting campaigns, which I've had some pretty good success with where Amazon figures out where your ad should be, those are set up by Amazon's algorithms and you don't really have any choice with that. So you have to experiment with both because I've had some manual target campaigns that have done really well compared to the auto target. So again, experimentation. One other thing is that you may not be using the right type of ad. So for example, the lock screen ads just didn't work for me at all. Those may not work for you either. The sponsored brand ones didn't work for me. But then I've had others who have done really well with them. So again, experimentation. Now, when it comes to online advertising, a more is better strategy, whether that means more ads or higher ad bids, doesn't necessarily result in more sales. Uh, growth in sales from advertising is typically not linear. There comes a point of diminishing returns, no matter what type of advertising is pursued. You also have to remember that you might get a number of clicks that don't end in a sale. This ups your ad total spend and your losses could escalate quickly. Even more reason to resist the temptation to increase your ad bids in the hopes of winning the ad placement and sales game. I learned my lesson with this with my former promotional products business. I would up my ad spend on Google AdWords, which is similar to Amazon's AMS system. I'd get more clicks, but I also spent more money and didn't see a dramatic bump in sales or inquiries. So when I started using Amazon's AMS system for my eBooks, I haven't made the same mistake. Caution is recommended when scaling up your AMS ad bids. Don't waste your money by spending dramatically more on ads if your only goal is to win the ad bid game. Slower, more incremental, upward campaign changes allow you to assess your ad's performance at each ad spend level and make needed adjustments. Don't ever, ever go over your maximum ad bid level. Also realize that even your maximum ad bid may be too high at times to generate a positive return. As mentioned earlier, constant monitoring and making adjustments is required to keep your return on your ad spend investment. Here's another factor that's coming into play more recently. Have you visited Amazon lately? You might be surprised to see ads for things you would never buy on Amazon. Vehicles, auto insurance, home insurance, home loans. So what does this mean? Competition for ad space on Amazon is going to be increasing over time. Realize too that bigger advertisers have bigger budgets. So they can outspend smaller advertisers like self-published authors. I've noticed that my ad spend that used to produce great results is no longer doing so. Now, luckily, I'm aware of both the increase in competition and the difficulty with scaling up advertising so that I'm not tempted to overspend and lose money. 
And as I emphasize over and over again, the only real marketing strategy that can help self-published authors is to build your author platform. If you are looking for more resources on how to manage this whole Amazon sales game, I'd suggest looking at my book, uh, Self-Publishing to Make Money, What You Need to Know. It's available as a print book, ebook, and audiobook. And then I have a Udemy course, How to Sell Your Self-Published Book on Amazon. So check out both of those resources. I hope you found all this helpful, and if you did, please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on whatever podcast platform you like to use. I'm on all the major ones, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean. Pick your favorite. I'm probably there. If you like the YouTube video better, you just have to subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so you get an alert when there's a new video up. I would appreciate it if you would share the audio or the video with your friends on social media. My self-published books are available on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is go to one of those sites, type in my name, Heidi Thorne, and my author page will come up with a list of available titles. If you want to connect with me, my website is HeidiThorne.com, and I'm most active on the social channels of Instagram and TikTok at, at Heidi Thorne. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day.